share with you my thoughts about history and evolution of limb lengthening. This is my hospital. Many of you know where is it. And when I'm talking about history, it's always subjective. Indeed, history is his story. And it's reflected my personal view that also time related. And my view about history of limb lengthening were different 10 years ago than what I have today. I'll start with the case of Pablo Picasso. Once in the middle of the life, he received a letter from his sister Lola, where she described how she is jealous because Pablo, so rich, famous, surrounded by love and happiness, and what she achieved in her life, what she achieved. And Pablo replied, Lola, you don't understand. I'm short. Most famous painter of his time really suffered that he was 163 and not 170. The difference that we can provide so easily today. This is caricature, but it was a true story. French soldier, after post-traumatic Malunian Pyrenean conflict, with crooked leg, but he was able to walk on this leg, requested to perform straightening of the leg. Instead of, if osteotomy was sword, so what, swordotomy, not osteotomy, finally he get perfectly straight leg, but he was unable to walk until his death on this straight leg. So it was good result with bad outcome. And all these gentlemen with MD diploma did what we call acute lengthening. What does it mean? If you need three centimeter, they will do three. If you need five, five. I just can't imagine what were results of this acute lengthening. And this is one of the fathers of modern limb lengthening, Italian surgeon, Alessandro Codivilla in Rizzoli Institute, Bologna. He published in American Journal of Orthopedics in 1904 his work, what he called continuous extension method. Young, healthy man with coxa breva, he performed oblique osteotomy of femur. Steinman pin was already invented, so inserted Steinman pin into the calcanus applied traction between 10, 25 to 75 kilo. Part of the body was incorporated in cast. It was combination of acute and gradual lengthening. So every morning, the nurse did one tour, okay? The complication included hypertension, uncontrollable convulsions, so-called status epilepticus. Some of patients died. Nevertheless, Elizarov said, all subsequent publications are nothing more than modification of Codivilla technique. Two Soviet sergeants, not best probably friends of Elizarov, so hated him that found in American literature description of first circular external fixation of Joseph Bittner. And this was done at the end of the Second War. Austrian sergeant Wittmoser, before sent for publication in industry, sent it to his mentor, Lawrence Böhler. And Böhler wrote, your device looks very pretty, but don't publish it. Otherwise, someone might use it and that would be a major disaster. And he indeed never published it. And this is one of the giants, not only German, but world orthopedics. German surgeon Heinz Wagner, when I was resident, we did Heinz Wagner prosthesis. I learned from my previous late boss, Victor Bialik, how to do femoral fracture fixation with this fixator. <coughs> He wanted to speed up the lengthening process. So what he did, osteotomy, 
acute lengthening of two centimeter, then gradual for velocity rate about two millimeter in order to prevent collapse. He put plate and screw in order to fill this correction gap. He put, he put graft. In his hands, he had reasonable results. In all other, it was 150% complication rate because it was against rule of the creator. And this is a real genius. Soviet sergeant Gavriil Abramovich Ilizarov. He was born in the territory of what today Belarus, that time it was Poland, Belovesh, in a poor Jewish family. Not many knew, uh, uh, knew this fact. His mother was Polish Ashkenazi Jew. His father was from Dagestan. Later, family moved to Dagestan to Kusari. He started medical school before Second War. He, the medical school moved six times because of the advances of the Nazi troops. When he finished medical school in 43, he was sent he was solo physician in the territory of small European country in Siberia, Dolgovka. Elizarov never received formal surgical training. He was true autodidact. In 44, he started to work in veteran hospital of Kurgan. There is a controversy uh, issues who was his first patient. Stuart Green in his book wrote that his first patient that Elizarov applied circular external fixation was victim of second war with post-traumatic knee flexion contraction after below knee amputation. It was long-standing uh, contracture spontaneous ankylosis of the knee joint, Elizabeth of plane to perform oblique osteotomy through the knee joint and to fill the structure gap with bone graft. But bone graft procedure was delayed because he went for vacation to cream. Meantime, he put two half rings with rods. The patient was instructed to turn traded rods slowly. When Vilizarov came from vacation and did x-rays, he was in shock because all the destruction gap was filled with a new bone. That how calotasis was revealed. And calotasis is gradual lengthening of reparative fracture callus. And this is, by the way, first circular fixation of the Elizarov. You see the holes, it's only for, for, for rods. And this is the whole process. Latency period, five, seven days. There's destruction, 0 0.25, four times a day. Why it's 0 0.25? It's four times, it's a full turn, uh, the nut over the rod. A consolidation, the twice of destruction, and then remodeling the so individual for every one of us. And this is one of the most nicest pictures in orthopedic, from scratch, from the osteotomy to the remodeling process. Despite his genius discovery, Elizarov was counted as a charlatan, also in Soviet Union, until Valery Brumel. Valery Brumel was a high ch jump Recordsman, six times. He six times. He was Olympic champion in Tokyo, and he was an icon in Soviet Union. His world record of two meter twenty eight centimeter was unbeaten for almost eleven years. And this is, by the way, his jump. No sound. And I need sound. So, and this man had a open fracture after 
motor accident, 13 operation in situ, Central Institute of Traumatology and Orthopedics. And after a year, he had chronic osteomyelitis, drained fistula. They offered him amputation, below knee amputation. Fortunately for him, there was Vladimir Goleyehovsky, who later emigrated to New York and was familiar with the work of Elizarov, that said secretly, go to Kurgan. They will save your limb. You know Goleyehovsky. And that's what Brumel did. Had successful operation in Kurgan. Come back to Olympic team of Soviet Union. Jumped again, not two meter twenty eight, but two meter and eight centimeter. And when you come back to Soviet Union team, and previously they offered you amputation, you cannot say it's a charlatan. It was the fact. He's another very, very famous. Was Soviet composer. Dmitry Shostakovich. He had nothing with the limb lengthening and deformity correction. He had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. You know, he was able to walk and breathe, but not write and play. And Elizabeth offered for him three months of rehabilitation therapy. He injected for him what we call in Russian, calcium chloride every morning. And Shostakovich felt much better. And at the end was, I hope, <laughs> second waltz. It was enough for Soviet Union. But what happened in the West? My mentor and teacher, John Erzenberg, told me, I never believed the Russians. If they able to cut speech of Leonid Brezhnev 11 times in a minute, maybe they doing the same with Lex. While the Elizabeth of Design <clears throat> provides an academic curiosity for potential innovators, it would not appear of interest for Western sergeants with complex connectors. It requires highly skilled engineers for erections and adjustment. It's one of the experts in experimental fixation, Dan Amir's, 1983. Surprisingly, he knew about Elizabeth. We should credit this man, Norwegian, self-educated, by the way, Norwegian anthropologist and explorer, Thor Herdal. He believed that if in Mexico they have pyramids, like in Egypt, there was a way how antique people connected each other. So this man, I was in his museum, Kontiki Museum in Oslo. This man who suffered from hydrophobia, hydrophobia in his first Kontiki tour, it, uh, only one out of six was professional sailor. And did, he did these expeditions. Look at this. He has his own agenda. In his team, he had one black, one white, one Russian, one American. He had Russian pulmonologist, very famous in Soviet Union, Yuri Sienkiewicz, this with cigarette, because it's pulmonologist. And Italian alpinist and photographer, Carlo Mauri, who had the same story, copy-paste, as Valery Brumel, with post-traumatic malunion, 20 years. Chronic osteomyelitis, drained fistula, and 
Sinkevich told to Maori story of Brummel. Brummel was world famous. He had permission to go to Kurgan. And as you see, you see the Veros, some equinos, the area of Fistula, Elizarov did very successful operation. As you see, five minutes from the operation room in Kurgan. So it's spinal anesthesia with addition of nicotine. <laughs> and when Maori come back to Italy, to his physician, Antonio Villa, they were astonished. They were really in shock with results of the Elizabeth of treatment. But first, Western, who came to Kurgan also in 1980, was Renato Spinelli. Spinelli spent in Kurgan several months studying the method, come back to Rome, published in 1983 in International Orthopedics, Monticelli Spinelli Method, Monticelli Spinelli Apparatus. He never credit Elizarov. Until his death, Elizarov was worried to share his wisdom in the West after Spinelli. But Italian surgeon Viz Mauri came to Kurgan, organized courses for one new Mercedes and $10,000. They had patent to do Elizabeth apparatus in Italy, Portugal, and later in the United States. And the Elizabeth spread in Italy. This the Bastiani who did the same with the monolateral external fixation. This is the organization courses in Kurgan. You see Michael, this is Stuart Green, Michael Samchukov, Sasha Cherkashen, and this is, by the way, translator, Oleg Gorbachev. And Dror Pelli told me that one day he called to Toronto. And when they asked him who, who called Dror Pelli, he said, Gorbachev. So <laughs> they called they call Pelli, Gorbachev, I want to talk, talk with you. Almost three days, <laughs> everyone knew that Gorbachev called the resident Dror Pelli. So we finished with Elizarov. The next evolution of the Elizarov method is definitely hexapod. We had no time, but it's a real, real, real evolution of the method. The history behind Hexapod is fascinating. We have no time to go, but shortly, French engineer, self-educated, by the way, also, Gerard Desargues, I hope I pronounce correctly, revealed projective geometry, how to describe two points in space. And very famous physics, Blaise Pascal, even published book, Nothing Came to Our Time. Fortunately, student of this Argus, Philippe de la Hire, made a notes Then, 300 years after, found in Buchanistic shop another French geometer, Michel Chazel. And together with Stuart platform, we are using projective geometry in flight stimulator, amusement rides, robotic, whatever, telescoping system. The first clinical patent was not by orthopedic surgeon, by French aeronautic engineer on Elizabeth apparatus. There was no computer, no math. But Russians were first also in hexapods. They first applied in, in 48. 84 to patient and did five years later patent on the hexapod. And this is Taylor's brother, the Hemix, Harold Terrell, an orthopedic traumatologist in Elvis Presley Re Memorial Hospital in Memphis, Charles Taylor. There was a first computer application of the method 
And for me, these are two develop two two these two guys. They did more than anyone for spreading of TSF all around the world. And there are so many hexapod today. Uh, this is one of them. This is Michael Samchukov with TLX. Leonis Solomon spent with me three days in Haifa and half a year after he had Suf. Uh, for me, for me, it's, I said to Professor Hamdi, for me, it's how you can simply jump if you're not Eliezer of Sargen. This it was my fourth case. I did two fractures, one tibia vara, this patient with eight centimeter shortening, no palpable pulses was my four, fourth case, four. With Eliezer of, it's take long time of learning curve to correct such deformity. So you, sh you should just tell the computer where you are, computer doing this job. And this was the final result. This is 10 years after. Internal lengthening. Russian discovered it first also. Russian are the best. Alexander Bliskunov in Simphilopol did first internal lengthening nail. Unfortunately, he died very shortly. But they still, in some places, Leonid Solomon told, still using Bliskunov nail. Then came many ISKD is one of them. When I was in Baltimore 2002, they did twice a day at least. Uh, but the many complications, most of them run away nail. Sometimes you do it millimeter, sometimes you do it centimeter. And this is feed bone nail, uh, very reliable for many years. Uh, Baumgartner told me that he personally did 2,000 and 4,000 all around Europe. This year it's available also in the United States, FDA approved. But undoubtedly, most popular is precise nail, precise magnetic nail. And this is one of the developers of precise, Stuart Green, who was also one of the first in, Nor in North America. He was editor of Elizer, the only Elizer of book in Springer. Okay. Uh, in mid 90s, he heard about Elizer in some French conference and said it's bullshit. Fortunately for him, Dror Pele was next to him and explained that it's not bullshit, the Elizer of method. That's how it started. I knew Stuart many years. He was with such belly, okay, pretty fat man. At age 65, his children bought for, me, for him bicycle. And he started to ride from home to the hospital. Then he knew about triathlons. He started to do triathlons, mini triathlons, okay? And I strongly recommend download today how the San Dimas Turkey Triathlon saved my life. It's available on the Google, where he wrote runners immature, I thought as my toilet bowl filled with bright red blood. And he told, you know, told to his to his uh, colleague urologist during lunchtime, <laughs> how good I am. I have a runner hematuria, and the urologist said, hey, did you smoke once? Tomorrow you're going for cystoscopy. And they found uh, advanced uh, bladder cancer and did reconstruction for him. Hopefully, everything is okay today. So this is the application of precise. And here, here it is, this is my girl. 14-year-old post-traumatic malunion. I mean, it's possible to do with many things, but this was after two months, and this is range of motion. It's, I can't believe we can provide with any external fixation. 
I'm a lucky man. These are two my mentors. One is Novator, second brother, and uh, Dror Pelly, after the death of the Elizabeth, definitely did more than anyone for spreading of the Elizabeth method all around the world. Dror was born in Tel Aviv. At age four, the family moved to Ottawa. And when Dror was a resident in Toronto General, the visiting professor was Renato Bombelli. And Dror, on the morning conference, put post-traumatic malunion of the tibia on the screen and asked opinion of Bombelli. And Bombelli said it was shortening. We now, in, in, uh, in uh, Italy, doing Elizabeth of Method. No one asked question. And Dror understood that everyone, everyone knew about Russian technique, and only he doesn't know. At the coffee break, he take pen and ask to Bombelli to explain what is the Elizabeth of Method. When Bombelli started to draw the rings and nuts and rods, Pele understood that not anyone in the conference Anyone in Canada doesn't know what is the Elizar of method. He had a vision. He really had a vision. He started to study Italian, learned Russian, spent several months in Italy, in Kurgan, came twice to Kurgan, and he was the first that bring Elizar of method to North America. Draw is the author of the most important book in the field of deformity correction, principles of deformity correction. It's my book, as you see. It's well, well written. And he's behind the Cora method. And try to do any conference on congenital deformities without mentioning draw spelling name at least once in a minute. Try to do it. Super hip, super ankle, super knee, it's all drawer. And this is John Herzenberg, that together with drawer, they built International Limb Lensing Institute in Baltimore, first in Kurgan, eh, first, first in Kernan, then in Sina Hospital. And John, at age 15, came to Israel. Kibbutz Beta Shita was in Kfar Bloom. Unfortunately, came back to Boston. No, I don't know, fortunately or no, unfortunately. And he is behind the spreading of Ponseti wisdom all around the world. You can say that he is a teacher, mentor, educator, whatever. For me, the most comprehensive description of John is Yiddish word mensch. Well, I finished with the Israeli player, tennis player, Dudi Sela. He has nothing with limb lengthening and deformity correction. For professional tennis player, he is unusually short, 175 centimeters. Should we do limb lengthening for Dudi Sela? This is how he's looking when he's <laughs> on his tiptoes. So this is the last.